In this section, we will talk about the psychology of testing. The mindset that you use as a tester while you are testing or reviewing is different from the mindset that is used while developing software, okay? So like we see in this picture, this person sees this number as six and the other person sees it as nine. Both of them are not wrong, okay? But each one of them is seeing the same thing from a different way or in a different perspective. This is the same for testing and development. When you develop something, you can't criticize it, okay? So you see your product as the best product in the world, okay? So you need someone else to look at your product, someone experience it, so that he tells you if it is really the best product or you are biased towards it because it's your product, okay? If the developers have the right mindset, they can test their own code. But what is better that we separate this responsibility to a tester? Why? First, so that the developer focuses his effort on his work. Second, because the tester will find bugs more efficiently than the person who wrote the software. The tester needs to have a certain degree of independence, okay? So that he can find defects more effectively, okay? If the tester is not independent, so he is a developer, okay? He is like the developer who wrote the software. But this independence is not a replacement for familiarity, okay? We don't say that the tester is living in a black box and he doesn't know anything about the software and at the end, we give him the software so that he tests it. No, he also has to be familiar with the software that he is going to test. Most people see testing as a destructive activity. That's the true, but we try to change it. How can you be a good tester? What are the skills that the tester needs? To look for failures in a system, you require some skills. What are them? First is curiosity. You have to be curious about the software, try all the combinations and so on. You must have a certain degree of professional pessimism. Pessimism is the opposite of optimism. You must have a critical eye. You have to give attention to details. The most important skill in software tester is to have good communication skills. Why? Because tester deals with people all the time. He has to criticize them. He has to tell them that they are wrong. If you don't have good communication skills, this job will be difficult, okay? People will not accept being criticized from you if they don't like you, if they don't have a good communication skill with you and also the tester needs experience to find defects. We talked about independence. The tester needs to be independent. So what are the levels of independence that the tester can have? The first level is that the person who wrote the software, the person who wrote the code, the developer, he is the one who is testing, okay? And this is the least level of independence. The other level is that we have another person in the same team who tests that software. So we have a team of uh, five persons, for example, four of them are developers and one is a tester. The third level is that tests are designed by a person or persons from a different organizational group, okay? So, for example, we have a development team and a test team, okay? And they don't interact directly. The development team reports their work to the development manager and the testing team report their work to the test manager. So this is a very high level of independence, but it needs a big company so it can be used. If this is a small company, a startup consisting of 20 people, we can't have different organizational groups, okay? The last level and the highest level of independence that we have tests designed by a person from a different organization or company. This is outsourcing, okay? So after we finish our project or while we are working on it, we handle it to another company, another organization, and they test it. Or we upload it online so that we have freelancers from all around the world testing it. This is the highest level of independence, but also this is the most expensive level of independence. This is the rule. As independence increases, the budget has to increase also. Problems of communication occur a lot in software testing. Why? Like we said, because tester has to criticize people. So they don't like to be criticized. People don't like to be criticized, okay? So some problems of communication might happen. How do you solve these problems? How do you, as a tester, deal with these problems? First, start with collaboration rather than 
battles try not to fight with people okay collaborate with them and reminds everyone of the common goal of better quality systems each time when a problem of communication occurs remind them we need better quality i don't have a problem against you i don't want to criticize you my goal is a good product this is my job the third thing is to communicate findings he means bugs okay so when you find a bug communicate it in a neutral way in a fact focused way don't criticize the person who created it don't go to the developer or designer and you tell him okay you are not doing your job well you make many bugs your software is bad no nobody accepts that okay you have to write a bug report a neutral bug report a fact focused with screenshots with videos but don't criticize the person ever okay he will hit you next you try to understand how the other person feels and why they react as they do why do they think that you are a bottleneck okay why do you think that you delay the project do you really delay the project or another reason that you need to understand so that you can communicate with them in a better way the last thing is that you confirm that the other person understood what you have said and vice versa you need to make sure when you tell the developer that he made a mistake or there is a bug in his software you need to make sure that he understood what you are talking about he might understand something very different and that makes a lot of problems